Hello, uh, good evening everyone. Uh, good evening uh, to those uh, visiting us here live tonight, those that are watching us uh, from room A, and all those that are watching us via YouTube, streamed live as we speak. Um, I think this is probably the most crowded BK talks I've ever organized. So <laughs> probably it's like way, way, way more crowded than, than it has ever been. Um, I'm really happy to be here, excited, probably nervous. No, probably I am. Uh, it's a honor. It's a honor to have tonight with us Ai Weiwei, uh, somebody that, well, personally you feel attached to somehow. Um, I want to... Uh, First of all, thank, before going into the introduction of our uh, panel members tonight, thank the Kunsthal, who's celebrating or who is organizing an exhibition starting this weekend for uh, somehow getting in contact with us, also thanking Job for putting us in contact and make possible these BK talks with IYOA. So thank you very much to the Kunsthal, Kunsthal for facilitating uh, all this. Um, uh, tonight, Ai Weiwei will we have a conversation uh, with our Dean, Dick van Hamere. I suppose that we all know him, so it's maybe not necessary to extend in the introduction. And with Job Schoren. Sorry for the, for the pronunciation. Uh, sorry, Job. He is the coordinator of the Stream Architecture Group, and they have been involved in many, many projects throughout the world that have to, de that have to do with, with emergency, So, which is something that we will probably uh, be talking about uh, tonight. Um, we decided that the best idea in order to have this conversation tonight was to ask you, students, what is it that you wanted to talk to about to Ai Weiwei. So uh, we put this wall maybe many of you uh, uh, have seen it, in order for you to be able to write your questions for IYY. There was also a QR and there was, we made this list of questions. So all these questions have been uh, uh, worked out uh, with Dick and Job and they, will be, they have organized a conversation uh, around your questions. So thank you very much to all, uh, all of you who participated uh, doing, uh, doing, doing this. So, I have no words, or maybe not capacity, to introduce Ai Weiwei. I'm, I'm completely unable to do that. You all should know who he is. So I'm going to just very briefly explain what, how I feel attached to the person who is visiting us here tonight. Those are pictures that I take every time I go to my bedroom in Madrid. This is where the place where I grew up. And what you see there is a garden. And the trees uh, are very, very big now. Uh, so you don't see what is behind. But uh, when I was a kid, I would uh, look at always at that yellow circle over there. And what I would see every day or every morning when I would wake up was this. This is Francisco Franco's mausoleum, north of Madrid. He is the dictator, fascist dictator, who ruled Spain for over four decades. I grew up in a family who fought the uh, Franco regime all their lives. They grew up knowing that Spain should move into democracy, into freedom. They were oppressed and repressed. And every morning I would wake up wondering why that cross was always there. This is actually Franco's tomb. 
Franco decided to build his tomb in the beautiful mountains of Madrid. And in order to do so, what he needed was the work of uh, war prisoners, oppressed people who, against their will, had to build this mausoleum. Um, he would go there and uh, uh, torture people in order to build that. And in the end, uh, well, he had his mausoleum where he was finally buried. And uh, well, here you see the pictures of the dictator. And this is the place where he is now. And this is how the basilica of the church looks like. What I'm going to get at now is that this tomb stayed there for over 40 years. Only two years ago, the fascist dictatorship of Spain was actually moved out. In between, people, whoever who wanted, could go there and worship him, bring him flowers, and all this kind, do all do these kind of gestures with their hands. I hope, or I suppose, that you know what it means, and I'm getting at the point here. For many years, when I was a child and a teenager, being told the stories of oppression, repression, lack of freedom, etc., etc., I wouldn't understand why a democratic country like Spain would allow these people to still celebrate oppression and fascism freely like that with their hands, with that gesture. And one day, I saw this picture. And I couldn't believe it because I would have never, ever done that. I grew up in a system in which, even though we have moved into something else, which was democracy, you had to somehow still respect the dictator, move forward, respect it. And I would have never thought of doing that study of perspective, which has a lot to do with architecture in the end, isn't it? So, uh, without further ado, after uh, letting you know my connection with Ai Weiwei, I want to please join me in welcoming the uh, artist, the activist, the architect, the filmmaker, and the human being. Thank you very much, Ai Weiwei, for being here tonight. Thank you, thank you so much all for joining us uh, today. I, I, uh, today I looked up the, my, my, my first message to uh, IYY, which was in April, and we were, um, is this going good? I think so. Um, we were, uh, the, the earthquake in, uh, in Turkey had just happened, and students were calling me and asking me, can we, can we address the earthquake and can we do a project about that? And we, uh, we decided to go to Turkey also and to see the devastation of the earthquake. And we talked a lot about um, is, it, is it working? Can you hear me in the back? Can you wave? Yeah, perfect. Mm. Ah, much better. Um, so, so we went to Turkey and we, we saw the devastation. And uh, I noticed that uh, uh, your work about the earthquake in China in 2008 suddenly was, was, uh, had a much bigger impact to me than, than before. Eh? So I, I was curious to your, uh, how you experienced the earthquake in, in China and how you got to uh, find a way to deal with the, the, uh, the emotion and the, and the sense of loss of, of that earthquake. Hello. Can you hear me? Okay. No? No? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, uh, first, I was uh, a bit surprised to come to your school and uh, talking about uh, earthquake. Mm. Uh, I, in my lifetime, I've experienced two major er earthquakes. One is 1976. I think most of you have, have not born yet. So that happened in China. And, uh, 200,000 people crashed dead because uh, uh, a single earthquake happened in, um, in northern China. The second one is 2008, May 12th, 
uh, right before the Olympic Stadium uh, uh, being built, or you know the, the Olympic uh, ceremony, ceremony is on uh, October or uh, August eight. So this earthquake is May twelfth. Uh, earthquake uh, happened in Sichuan, and uh, which is famous for their cushions. And uh, we realize there's a huge casualty. Actually, till today, we don't know what the exact number of the people dead, but uh, probably between 70 to 80,000 people. When earthquake uh, becomes so large, I, I couldn't write any blogs anymore. Normally, I would write it two, three articles a day, but uh, people wondering why you stopped writing. Uh, I just find uh, speechless. I have to go to the location, I realized. So we went to the location. And uh, the purpose is to do a research on schools. Um, because when earthquake happens, if the farmer's uh, house collapsed, uh, nobody care because they build the house themselves, and uh, but if the school uh, collapsed, which schools are built by government, and uh, should have uh, uh, strong reg uh, uh, regulations, so we keep asking how many students. Uh, and disappeared in this earthquake, the government never gave us a clear answer. Uh, they even said that's a national secret. So I decided to go to earthquake area to do a research. We call it a citizen investigation because it's not uh, encouraged for anybody to go to earthquake area which is quite, uh, uh, quite far from Beijing. So we, on my blog, I said uh, we will find all the students who, who passed away, and uh, we'll, we'll do the research. And uh, so people ask me, when you stop your research, I said, till the last person being found. So we need their name, their birthday, and the which school they, uh, they, they, they had this kind of tragic moment. So we set up teams, about uh, uh, groups. We went to this earthquake uh, area, which about, uh, about 20 schools collapsed, uh, badly damaged. So we send a group, three or four as a group, to those area to knock on the doors, talk to their par parents or teachers to collect those names. Then, of course, we, we found those names, and we daily are posting those names on my blog. And we also landed up a, a candle. So that in China is uh, some experience nobody ever experienced. An individual uh, research for, for the death toll of the earthquake. And, uh, and morally or even legally, people are shocked why this, this artist will do that. But uh, gradually, we found out about 5,219 students, name, birthday, and uh, you know, it's, it's very difficult because the police arrest us about 40 times, and uh, they would delete uh, all the findings and the tear, or photos, or some of our people being beaten. So, but make it short, we, we it's very successful. We managed to find uh, almost all the students, because some uh, ki uh, kindergarten people, you, you cannot really find their name and uh, completely uh, disappear. Maybe we, we're still uh, about 200 names away from the total casualty. Mm. Uh, 
uh, that's the that's the story. Yeah. Yeah. It's. Uh, I noticed from our from the questions of our students that mm -hmm. the, and also myself that uh, it is maybe a, a struggle for us to find how to rebuild then after an earthquake. Uh, it's, it's sort of easy to say it should be uh, earthquake resilient, but that's a very technical approach. Um. Uh, well, uh, it's a complicated issue because uh, uh, normally uh, in China the building all will be uh, reconstructed by the government. So they, of course, they, they have their regulations, they have their own construction team, and uh, there's not much uh, interference from the uh, architecture mm. uh, world. And uh, so there's a, a kind of building not really related to the past, or uh, there's not clear study about uh, the environment and also uh, yeah all the buildings will build the same uh, so there's not much architecture or planning uh, involved hmm. uh, because the local government want to just to show how how fast they can rebuild it and uh, it will look it uh, doesn't ha leave any traces of the earthquake mm -hmm. or what ha what has before. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Um, I will continue with some other questions, which are maybe a bit more general, uh, yeah. not just about uh, mm -hmm. the effects of an earthquake on all of us. Um, th we received a lot of questions on position of art, architecture, and what it means also to be an activist. Um, and maybe I want to start with this uh, question. Um, and I quote now, eh? you often make art to raise awareness of world issues. In your opinion, should art do more than activate people's attention and perspectives on these events? In other words, another question, is art about questioning or can art also give answers? Um. I only can talk about my case. I, I get involved with a lot of issues, social, political issues, and uh, I would never call myself as an activist. Mm -hmm. I, I did those, doesn't matter for earthquake or for the refugee situation, it's only for myself. I'm a very selfish, uh, selfish person. I want to be honest to myself and I want to find the true knowledge about those uh, uh, situations. So it's very difficult because this is, uh, this is a mass media, there's a propaganda, you know, there's everybody, newspapers or televisions, they all try to lead the story. But uh, as an individual, I I somehow cannot ex exist or survive without my personal experience. Uh, I think f uh, for artist or writer, I think this is very crucial to have your own experience, to go to the location and uh, to be there, uh, to experience it with your own eye and uh, your emotions. I think this is uh, not for art. It's just for the foundation of being a, a individual or a, a human. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, I think I lost uh, the the very essential meaning of living. Yeah. yeah. That that leads me to other questions that were asked because we have a whole full of aspiring architects, urbanists, mm -hmm. landscape designers, mm -hmm. and. Is there a difference between how you should look at these things as an artist or as an architect? Um, well, I happen to be as also as an architect. I build yeah. uh, maybe 60 uh, uh, projects already. 
but I l never learned a day in in a school, beautiful school like this. Huh? Uh, I w I would dream to 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 even to study uh, in school like this when I was young. But I my experience is if you have enough interest or curiosity about life. Uh, then you can become a good uh, landscaper or or uh, architecture student or or architects. But if you don't have that, even you are well trained, or you have all the ambition to or to work in those uh, big forms, I still think you don't have the very basic quality being as uh, someone who who can build. And who understand how to build? I think that that's a beautiful reaction, and maybe we move on also a bit more to the practice of producing art or architecture. And there was one question about your work, which I think is also quite interesting. Um, again, quoting a question: In general, your work requires, at least often, large spaces, monumentality seems like an important form of expression in a work which the viewer not only observes but enters physically, immerses itself in the space. Well, it brings us, of course, also to architecture. And the student asked, can you reach the same effect uh, or impact with a small, very intimate, personal work? How important is scale, monumentality for you? I think that is uh, <laughs> uh, truly a misunderstanding. I, okay. I don't care about uh, so-called uh, monu monu uh, mo mm -hmm. monumental yeah. quality. And, uh, but our sense about scale is really come from uh, our human size, you know. Uh, for, for ants, we are already too large, but uh, for <laughs> elephants, we are still too small. <laughs> so. I, I don't know, this kind of measurement uh, really depends on uh, what is the message, you know, uh, takes how, how much volume to, to extend your expression. And I did a lot of small works, uh, very small, but people don't, don't even notice it. It, it seems strange, people only uh, notice when there's a uh, uh, heavy labor or a lot of uh, material involved, which uh, I don't think that uh, has anything to do with the meaning of the work. It, it reminds me uh, your answer of uh, the first line in a famous textbook at least 40 years ago when I was a student here, of Nicholas Pevsner, and he says, when an object has enough space for a person to move around, it's architecture. If not, it's art. I don't think you agree. For you, there's not a difference, maybe, between uh, art and architecture. There's, there's difference. One, there's uh, uh, the one something you can measure. That's architecture. Mm -hmm. And the art, you cannot measure art. Art is in your, your heart, or should work on your you know, mentally, psychologically, so it's not measurable. Yo, I yeah. think you should continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm so uh, I'm triggered by uh, you are saying that uh, students should have uh, sort of involvement and curiosity, and uh, I'm thinking of Miriam, who's sitting over there, who managed to get access to a refugee camp, which is quite amazing. Um, and, and I know you did uh, uh, films on refugees, huh? and, and we have this one question which uh, states, what role do you see for architects and students in activism for humanity? I'm, I'm, I'm really curious to what our role could be in, in sort of addressing uh, th those topics huh? as, as architects and as students. Well, before I come to here, I want to, uh, to give a talk to EO Architecture School uh, in United States, Yale. Yale. And uh, yeah, the, the, 
They were nice, but they <laughs> asked me the last question is, what kind of advice you can give to students? I, I just burst out. I didn't even think that much. I said, uh, to quit the school. <laughs> uh, we, we are not going to ask that question. Yeah, I but uh, we won't ask it anymore. <laughs> yeah, so I, I warn you, don't ask that question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because in the United States, you have to pay such high tuition to, to study. But uh, I realize today many students do not wash their clothes. Of course, they are, there's washing machine. They don't know how to cooking. They don't even wash dishes. All they do is on computer, and they think they know everything. And uh, I think that is, uh, I'm not saying you cannot be a good architect. You're just not even qualified to survive by yourself. Mm. <laughs> so I think, uh, yeah, uh, why wasting time? You know, you can just go to the beach and uh, enjoy the sunshine. Still, um, are more reasonable than make those drawings, you know, make those straight lines and the <laughs> models. Yes. Come on, the world have a lot of architecture, and uh, it was there before. Very often, it's more uh, better architecture than today, and uh, there was always be, you know, because mm -hmm. we need some space to to work okay. on. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll close the school. Tomorrow? Yeah. No, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. I, 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 can because I without this school, we wouldn't have this conversation with you. So we need uh, it. So it yeah. it's, so <laughs> strange. it's so strange today. I, I, you're either, you know, not, not here. I think people are quite fit. You know, you must be go to gym or exercise or ride bicycles. <laughs> but uh, people growing up, already 20, 30 years old, basically didn't do anything, you know, for survive. It's just mm -hmm. uh, sitting there, listening to some stupid guy from China to talk about <laughs> things, you know. It's, yeah. it's, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, I, I, I get more and more yeah. curious to the answer for my next question, because I, I showed you the model making room we have, and, uh, yeah. and we like to, motivate students to make sketches and drawings and models and, and uh, go to places and, and, uh, and do the work, eh? as you say, do the dishes, but then uh, as an architect, I guess. And I, I, am, I am so curious to how your studio works. Do you, do uh, yeah, good question. <laughs> I don't know how to make models. I always admire people, oh, you know, the model being done so nicely. But I realize those training is really trying to, to train the students to become a, a part of a big machine. You know, the machine produce uh, so, something so-called architecture. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. You know, there's, um, so you can get a good job in some big form, which already employed 2,000 other architects. <laughs> And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's how the world functions. But it, it, uh, yeah. uh, it is changing a little bit. I, 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 uh, my friend at Norman Foster asked me for a good student for a job. Norman. Norman Foster. No, okay. And uh, and the and and the student I I recommended said no 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 I want to work for a small office. I th I was you know uh, when I was young I would probably have done it. The, the, um, but I think they are the, our students are pretty uh, independent. I, uh, I think yeah. uh, those big companies, of course, they just want some someone efficiently, mm -hmm. can quietly make drawings, some produce some uh, models, and uh, you know because uh, all those things uh, are very commercial. Yeah, and uh, very rarely you can talk about the concepts or or moral or, or aesthetic judgment. Um, by doing that, you cannot find a job. Mm -hmm. It's not possible because uh, the big uh, companies, basically they are moralless or I should say shameless companies. So you cannot find a job if you're too good. <laughs> And, and, and how does it work in your studio? My the studio, I will never call myself as a professional, 
only when some, someone desperately asks us to do something, or we think, oh, this is need to be done. Mm -hmm. So then it's easy, you know, I can directly work with uh, carpenters or, or construction people. I, I can tell them, you know, what is the problem. You know, you have a real discussion with them. And, and, and do, are they part of the studio? Do they make, do they try different things out and, and try mm. different materials? No, things like they that? cannot try anything. They have to listen to me. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not allowed, right? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and so... Th th I can let them try, <laughs> but the wasting time. Yeah. After all, I still yeah. make decisions, so... Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and does that mean that your idea is, is completed and then you make the artwork in one no, go? Or? No, very often I would say I have a concept, that concept gave to anybody and uh, to build it perfectly or imperfectly still would be have a 70% of the standing there, you know. So if my concept can support 75%, even by the poorest uh, craftsman, still would be a good building. Mm -hmm. That's my, uh, how I measure it. Hmm. Of course, someone, uh, if they are very skilled, they can make it a little bit better. But uh, I, I never try to make my building like 90% right, because I, don't, I think that idea to ask somebody to perfectly down what you, you are thinking is a stupid idea. Yeah. Because the building is for someone else to use it, and the, during their usage, they change it a lot, you know, is they are not going to perfectly, uh, unless yeah. they are Robert, yeah, you know, they, they follow your instructions, otherwise they will re re yeah. redo their design. I think it's true, and it's even, it's the designer, the user, but also the builder. In the end, sure. a building, you can't make it yourself, <laughs> and the builder also brings in his own Yeah, full of things. surprise, a lot yeah. of surprise, yeah. yeah. But sometimes it's better. Yeah. I always think, uh, they always ask me, said, uh, oh, I'm so afraid to make a mistake. I said, don't worry, your mistake is at my advantage. You know, I already calculate that would be better, you know, so. Yeah, yeah I think it's really mm -hmm. interesting to, to think about failure and what it means in the creative process. Eh? I, I, uh, I often show uh, a, a clip to my students from Anish Kapoor where he says, I want to fail and I want to fail fast. And then, and then get on with the next idea. So to get the ideas out of the way which don't work. Um, I, I, I have one really important question, I think, from our students, uh, one with which we all struggle, I guess. And it is, how do you overcome a creative block? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, if, if you are stuck, how do you get unstuck in the creative process? Or Maybe you never are. Uh, yeah, I don't understand the words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I got stuck. Yeah, yeah if, you, if you're, if you, um, um, hmm, maybe Dick, do you have some other words for the same? Uh, no, maybe it's the other question uh, that was also asked. How can you make decisions? Sometimes it's very difficult hmm. as a designer to make a decision. Should I do it like this or that? And then uh, you can get stuck. Okay. Uh, Every decision, big or small, for me, is all difficult. Uh, why is it, it's not about a form or shape or, or some kind to meet some kind of standard, but uh, rather uh, if that move is necessary. I always calculate mm -hmm. if it's necessary. So whenever it's not necessary, I think uh, it should not be there, and I, I, I like the, what Wittgenstein says, a good architect is not to, to get a good idea, but rather to push away those, uh, you know, the, the bad ideas. Uh, that's mm -hmm. uh, something like that, huh? it's a translation. So I think uh, there's, when there's uh, two attemptations, or even more than that, that means this idea from beginning is bad doesn't matter which one you choose. But very often we will say, oh, there's many ways to do it. I think that's, you don't know what you're talking about. There's only one way to do anything. 
So in that sense, uh, you have to give yourself the difficult time to, to, to really examine the project. Uh, so every good project is, is absolutely necessary. You know, it, it doesn't have to make the argument. So when you, you're trying to, uh, to give too much explanation, very often architects would, uh, would try to convince people, I think that's bullshit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that means you're not, uh, you're not, you don't have confidence, you know. Yeah. And, and, and can you tell us more about how this process works for you? Are you because now you are here and you're not making an artwork. Do, do, do you make art in the mornings or are oh, you then in... Uh, I, I, I make art when I'm in, uh, in, in bathroom. I often go to the toilet. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's if I have to find a, a location probably that's that's good enough you know so hmm. uh, I, I never see there's a moment I make art yeah I, I never even think uh, uh, I'm an artist you know and uh, it happened to be like this and I gave a, this trip I gave a, about six talks and uh, I have to also uh, uh, to do a lot of the interviews or conversation. I like conversations uh, because this is very personal and very, you know, you directly talk about the issues. Yeah. And, uh, and, and if you do architecture, you're lucky you have to work on like two years on one project, which I think most time your, your mind is empty and, uh, you know, isn't, it's not so interesting. It's boring, you know. It's very boring. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, so for you, yeah. no, sorry. Yeah. So for you, the, let's say the what we call here the creative process. It's really thinking. Uh, yes, I think uh, it's uh, thinking and experiencing. Um, what is the experience? Is uh, you have to let yourself into a circumstance. Uh, maybe I'll give a bad example. I come here, this is the second day, but I already spend uh, most of time in casinos. And uh, yeah, yeah um, yesterday I spent about uh, four hours. Today, before we come here, I spent another two hours. You know, casino, how stupid, right? I mean, you <laughs> see the people in there, none of them are so clean and so <laughs> nice and, uh, you know. But in there, you don't even look at another face. Yeah. It's just, uh, you will see probably the guy have some mental problems sitting there. And I, that's my way. I have always found my way. I need a moment to concentrate, I wanted to achieve something un not achievable, you know, that gave me some sense of uh, existence. If I do something, some, another one in another city or another art studio can still do that, I would quit, you know, why should I do that? Mm -hmm. So that, you know, that's my, me. Uh, so if you see someone doing the model next to you like that, you either destroy his model or destroy your own model. That brings us maybe here to the subject of education. I mean, we are yeah, here in a school. Or you maybe I, I have okay. one more question, yeah. which we sort of skipped. Uh, and I, I think it might be interesting. Um, I'm, I'm thinking of the Sunflower Seeds project in the Tate Modern. Eh? And it's very much about a sort of a craftsmanship and a tradition of making uh, ceramics. Um, and, it, and it feels uh, in a way maybe like architecture, because we are behind our computers during the night making the drawings. And, and these people were making the sunflower seeds in the ceramic. And it was maybe a sort of a similar uh, mindset almost. Eh? And, and so the, the question from the student is, why is it important for you to engage with history and tradition in your work? Is, is that a... What's the question? Ah, 
uh, why is it important for you to engage with history uh, and tradition uh, in your see. work? I think this is very easy to understand. Think about ourselves. If we don't know, if we don't have a memory, if we don't have a few friends we know before, or, or, or families, or grandma or grandpa, and uh, actually that would be a problem if we don't have a memory. We cannot really know who we are, but that is the biggest task for any individual to have a life, but to realize who, who he or she is. You know, this is uh, that's why we need to, to learn history and uh, to, to have more uh, real un realistic understanding of our past. And uh, especially in architecture, I think uh, uh, today we call it architecture, but uh, we, before that words must be, in China we don't have the words architecture. We never had it. It's, we, all the buildings are built by carpenters. Mm -hmm. And the carpenters is the most knowledgeable person in dealing with materials and the construction. Mm -hmm. So uh, I started to uh, become interested in architecture because I collect uh, antiquity and uh, I collect a lot of old furniture. And uh, those furniture can be many hundred years old. So they are shaking, so we have to open it up, clean it up to rebuild it. So by open up, to, you can see how, how intelligent those architecture are being built because Chinese architecture with no nails. They have a clear understanding about the wood, what type of wood, and how they use those wood structure by joints. are so intelligent. Yeah. So now I build my studio in Portugal completely uh, a huge building, about uh, 3,000 square meters, uh, all use of wood, and no, no nails. Yeah, it I just saw a picture. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And is that maybe, if I may interrupt you, eh, the answer, eh, we, we have a lot of discussions, I think, here in the faculty, what is the way forward for architecture? Because we see that the way we have been designing and building could lead to a catastrophe. And we have to look indeed back to how in the past, maybe in a more intelligent way, climate and, uh, you know, the, uh, let's say the avoidance that we deplete the earth from materials, that has been avoided, but we are doing it. Uh, well, I, 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 I was invited by a, a university who just opened the architecture school. It's, uh, it's called the, Zhongguo uh, uh, in Hangzhou. It's, uh, you know, uh, this architect Wang Shu invited me yeah. to teach uh, his uh, first class yeah, of architecture. He, in his idea, he think I can build in on with bricks, you know, because in the modern architecture, very few people know how to really build with bricks. Now it's all concrete or, yeah, yeah, uh, or iron, uh, iron construction. So I, I teach those students, uh, I give them uh, about a, a course, I said, uh, let's build without using architecture material, you know, the common material. Because if you use those materials, you already accept the quality the knowledge of the materials. So basically, you're doing nothing. So students really feel very frustrated. I said, let's build with uh, uh, soft drink bottles. So, yeah, you have to put yourself, give yourself a, a very difficult task. Then you start to thinking how to do that. So the whole school went to garbage collecting uh, poles to, to asking for those bottles. So we yeah. collect a whole big, big pile of bottles. That's, of course, school never really had that kind of practice. So 
eventually we find out how to use the bottle itself to structure a, a, a simple building. Then also I teach students how to build with bicycles. So as a result, I also made some artworks, but uh, uh, that started from mm. uh, my teaching of uh, how to use the language itself. Like the, I, I see some stools uh, was there. It's, uh, oh, this is a map of China, but there's, uh, yeah. before that I see, oh, this, those are built with stools which have uh, three legs. It's a traditional stool in China. You can see it uh, for dynasties. And uh, basically, this structure used the shape and the angle of the stools connect to each other without nails, of course. It's nothing added, something a, a cheap way because you have to find two, two surfaces connect to each other but uh, not even a nail or uh, anything added. So the purpose is to use its own language. But uh, how do you use its own language? Yeah. That means you have to really familiar. Yeah, really you really have to understand it. That's come back to your question of why we have to pay so much attention to, to the past. Yeah. Because the wisdom uh, come from the past, you know. That's yeah, okay. uh, craftsmanship I think also. You have to stay here and teach us, but uh, maybe we can find a way. But maybe as a contrast, uh, and uh, I very much appreciate and uh, completely agree with what you say, but we also have, of course, we look at the future, and there's another question. Um, about AI, it, it seems almost all about AI, artificial intelligence now. My, my name, AI. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I really don't like so it. So you're a pioneer. No, but but your name is also I, why, why? So yeah. Uh, yeah. we want to know <laughs> yeah. why. Yeah. So the question of the student was, uh, what role do you think AI <laughs> can have on the creative process that we have that word again. I think AI can replace uh, maybe majority of today's labor or works. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be doctor, lawyer, architects, and, uh, and uh, many, many, uh, uh, you know, I don't know if it's good or bad, but it, yeah. it's a very mediocre type of uh, uh, information, uh, how do you say, information, process or yeah, yeah. Um, but it can never replace humanity it can never replace uh, real creativity uh, and uh, it's, it's just very mediocre I that's why I don't like uh, you yeah. know that, that type yeah. of thing yeah. you know yeah. it, of course it's uh, it's a uh, really s uh, I, do, I would not call it uh, as a human future it's just uh, efficient for 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 production. Okay. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes uh -huh. many people see it as a threat. Yeah? It it is a threat. A yeah. well threat education learning process and uh, and the working places, but uh, still it's not. Uh, uh, it will not never replace the you know, a human intelligence is not possible. So maybe that's also, let's say, what teaching and, and our students can do, eh? to, to always put that for forward as a first thing, eh? the human uh, aspect contribution and not the computer. Uh, yeah, the, the computer is trying to become a perfect, but the human should not become perfect. Uh, humanity only because we have a, a weakness. Mm -hmm. We all know we have a weakness, and uh, we should focus on those weakness. And uh, it's not to destroy those uh, weakness. That is uh, Nazi's idea, you know. Yeah. So I I think uh, 
that's why uh, that's why we need the uh, uh, memory and we need to uh, understand our past and uh, yeah yeah well thank you already now we are we are nearing the end of our mm -hmm. conversation uh, but before really thanking you are there things you would like to address you say why did you ask that why did the students ask me this question or, or maybe you have a Q&A for the students and you have a question for them <laughs> yeah. I, uh, why don't you drink water only yeah. only me drink water <laughs> you need the bottles <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Job, maybe you explain about the message for our yeah. guest, um, and then we wrapping up. We are nearing uh, seven. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, we, we, we are making a present for you as we speak. Um, Eric, do we have the, 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 the box? Which we, we have the box. Yeah, we have the box. And, and is it somewhere? <laughs> can you give it to me, maybe? Or? What you've got is to take small cards. Oh, yeah, oh. I, I can explain that. Job will explain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we handed <laughs> out 500 postcards to the audience. There, there is 400 people here, but there's another lecture room elsewhere, and there's 150 people there as well. So we have a big audience. And uh, we asked everybody to write down their personal message for you, because I, I know you collect things. So I thought it was a nice collection of, <laughs> of uh, ideas. And I spent, uh, I spent Sunday uh, on the table saw so making things. Uh, without nails, but with glue, I have to admit. Um, <laughs> and uh, so, so we, we are now going to collect all the cards. And I know that uh, 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 our dean and you will meet tomorrow at, uh, at the uh, mayor. At the Kunsthal. At the Kunsthal. Yeah. So we so collect them tonight and tomorrow, yeah. and I will bring ah, them for you. Thank you. Yeah. And yeah, that is just a way to say thank you. Uh, it's wonderful uh, nice. that you were here, and I think uh, you gave us a lot of uh, food for thought. Uh, and that's, I think, that's real education. That yeah. is teaching. That is uh, giving us reasons to think. Um, so thank you so much. I want also to repeat my great thanks to the Kunsthal for uh, cooperating, making this possible. Um, I know. We will, you will now leave the hall. I will ask you to remain seated for just a few minutes also to write your cards. And yeah, yeah I think, thank you so much. Thank you for coming. So do we have another 20 minutes? Yeah, <laughs> we have. You want it? No. Thank you. Thank you you have a big program the coming days. <laughs> <laughs>